ddarko2013 and ddarko2013 is my backup channel. Okay, so um, I was going to show this video. I actually already recorded a full 15 minute video that I'm about to do. So this is going to be very redundant for me. And I hope it's going to be as good as the original. This basically, I've been under heavy attack. Um, I, I've barely been able to put out these videos um, last week, especially Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My internet was out half the time. Now all of a sudden my server's based two states away. My upload, my download speed is uh, less than one megabyte and it's supposed to be 12. So some serious remote attacks and intervening going on here with GGN. Uh, this is no you know, joke. I'm being serious here. So uh, I appreciate your support when you say hang in there because, you know, it is frustrating. It's very frustrating. So I'm not even going to waste the time to uh, show this video because it kind of whatever. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to let you know what's going on here behind the scenes uh, just to put this information out. So I'm going to try it again. All right, so private investors stake money on robotic uh, rockets to mine near Earth asteroids for rare minerals and water. So this is a project to start by 2014 to identify asteroids with signs of presence of minerals. So uh, sorry about that. I'm just doing all kinds of scans now to see um, what's on my computer, what little critters in that uh, are doing what they're doing so but uh, one of these comments he wrote in, uh, he put in here or someone did it's a good comment is what he forgot to say there is possibility of finding new elements so he just was basically this guy went in there and watered this whole thing down saying oh well you know what things what do they think they're going to find and you know if they're precious here on earth they're going to be precious there so and, you know it's kind of funny because what this technology they're saying oh we're going to have it in four years oh four years right you're going to be mining you're going to be mining on uh, moving asteroids all of a sudden, and you know, yet you can't even have alternative energy such as um, solar panels and wind and stuff like that to be successful. So you can see the agenda here, uh, of course, and it says here what he forgot to say. There is a possibility of finding new elements yet to be discovered. So it moves on here, and he says, uh, and one of them is, of course, is what we were coming before with the moon, helium-3 for plasma. I'll get into that along with gold. Gold is sold in electronic conductors uh, more than uh, just a currency now. So he was using it just as a currency. That's what he was referring to. He says, but it's using electronics, and now we have all these um, new gadgets coming out, um, uh, new chips for algorithms, uh, just really all crazy stuff, especially robotics and computers and drones. Uh, going on here, AI. Um, and so they need all these new metals that are going to be possibly discovered. And so the globalists quite possibly could be taking gold down, basically, as, uh, you know, this, you know, the most profitable, um, precious metal. So I'm going to get into that right now. Uh, yeah, of course, you have this is based off RDA, Resource Development Administration. Uh, this is, you know, all them getting together, talking about doing it. The thing about this gold is what? Is that there's a good possibility that when they discover these new precious metals on these asteroids or whatever, what's, what's gonna happen to the value of gold, right? That's kind of, it's kind of an interesting idea. So we know that the elites have been hoarding gold. They confiscated most of it in World War II and whatnot. And uh, we know that the IMF holds a bundle of it, right? We also know that the Chinese, um, along with other countries, uh, basically uh, gave over their gold um, to the Federal Reserve System and that back in the day around the 30s and stuff like that and they were issued treasury bonds uh, basically to you know so that when the time came they can get their gold back well now the Chinese probably want their gold back and I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna tie into in this video uh, also that what is that um, all right guys Italian police seized 1.5 billion United States securities from they didn't even finish it. They were so hurried to get it basically buried. Man, it says here, Italy's financial police sees U.S. government securities with a nominal value of $1.5 billion from an unidentified man in his 70s. So the old man, right? It's just an old lone man with a thousand tons of gold, which equaled up to about 3 billion euros, right? So, yeah, just a, just, a, you know... You know, he has prior convictions. Let's just uh, let's just not even look into it too much. But uh, it goes on and says, oh, yeah, it was in Rome. So just, you know, so you know, uh, it was what, the, that the United States officials were working along with people in, the Ro in Rome, the Italy's financial police, okay? So we know that the United States is basically a subsidiary corporation of uh, the crown in England and that, and then what? They're a subsidiary of the Vatican in Rome. So it makes sense that they're, 
that they're trying to cover their tracks here. They're trying to cover their tracks. And um, they dubbed it the Million Dollar uh, Probe is being carried out around the Capitol in cooperation. So what, it goes on here and it says they're evaluating the authenticity. Remember, so more fake bonds, the nature and the origin of the securities and somewhat which uh, may date back from the 1930s. So basically, new metals are discovered. It's a good chance that the value of gold could plummet. And so they're actually holding on to it, but they're getting rid of it at the same time. So they're covering their tracks, which is all these fake bonds, all the, all the um, other countries like the Chinese that are owed money from the Federal Reserve System. Well, they're going to put it on your backs, the Americans. We're going to be the ones to blame. So they're moving into a new industry. But, you know, when you look at this, when it says what? The hidden role of gold at the IMF. It says, the article says it highlights the most interesting but least discussed aspect of the international monetary system the hidden role of gold. So it goes on, it says the organization itself has the third largest gold hoard in the world, over 2,800 tons just behind the United States and Germany. It's interesting that the IMF fund still has this much gold since it officially stopped counting gold as an international reserve asset in 73. That's when, of course, the United States and Nixon and them took the United States dollar off the gold standard. So, however, it says the nations, some nations, individual nations, continue to uh, include gold in the reserves for internal purposes. Well, uh, April 25th, 2012, what are some of these countries? Well, wait for this to get out of the way. Russia and Mexico both buy nearly $1 billion worth of gold in March. That's right, Russia and Mexico. So it could be that they maybe know something that uh, the Western Illuminist groups don't, which is they may lose and gold may still be worth something. But who knows, really? But, uh, you know, going back to this, it was what? Back to the 30s. So that makes sense. Because remember, the United States... Uh, American citizens, their gold was actually confiscated by the government. And then you have this, suspension of trading on the securities market in Russia. Trading in the main sector of the securities market has been suspended until 6.56 Moscow time. And it goes on and it says here, a further one, to technical suspension of trading to be extended. The situation has been recognized as an emergency. So pretty big deal. Are they being attacked there in Russia? Uh, also, Iran halts cyber attack on oil servers. So looks like GGN is not the only one under attack by um, whatever this group is. And it says here, Iran said on Tuesday it has halted the spread of data deleting virus targeting computer servers in its oil sector and hoped to have all systems back and running within days. It's funny, though. I'm sure the same people are groups that are attacking me are the same groups that created the Stuxnet virus and was it, were attacking uh, facilities in Iran, right? So... That the, that's who we have to deal with, right? Those are the biggest censors. That's where most of these um, internet censorship, uh, data mining, all those types of uh, companies and that to store all of this information that they steal from uh, snooping and spying on us here in America, it actually goes through Israel. Iran says it may halt nuclear program over sanctions. So, uh, interesting story. Project Camelot interviews uh, Kesh, Iranian physicist, and uh, you can say what you want about um Carrie Cassidy, I'm kind of 50-50 on her. But either way, this guy's actually offered technology before to Iran and them. He laughed because back in the day, you know, they were trying to get their act together, their shit together in Iran. He says now they have a lot more scientists, so who knows? You know, we're talking about plasma now, guys. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. And uh, you never know. They could be uh, saying, okay, well, we're done with nuclear. Let's move on to something else. Uh, it says here, measures needed to end UK's late payment culture. So it says here, the government must unite to tackle the UK's late payment culture. So it's, you know, it's a, it's just a new phenomenon, right? It's not because people don't have money. It's just because, well, they don't feel like it and they're lazy. Fear of being blacklisted for future work means that rules which allow companies to charge interest on overdue bills are underutilized. Let me say this again. It says rules which will allow companies to charge interest on overdue bills are underutilized. These are the people when you don't have money, you say, I'll pay you at this time when I have the money. I don't have any money. They keep charging with fees and fees and fees. I refer to this uh, technique as uh, basically kicking a person while they're down in the face with a smile saying thank you for your business. I've had personal experience with that. And I'm telling you, that's what drives some people to go into the banks and start shooting. I'm not condoning it. But you, seriously, they put people in these corners, man, <laughs> you know. Uh, here's another corner they put them in. In the hospital, uh, basically, uh, col uh, debt collectors are now going to hospitals and the ER rooms and harassing patients. That's right. 
So it says New York Times reports medical debt collection company has been sending agents into the hospital uh, emergency room and post-op recovery to attempt uh, basically debt. So it goes on to say at least the collectors are not showing up in funerals or debt patients whose hospital visit did not go quite uh, as well as expected, at least not yet. So you joke about it, but just wait. Jailed for $280, that's right, return of debtors prison. It goes under, says a teaching assistant uh, was told that she didn't owe this medical bill for breast cancer um, treatment. She goes, she got the bill and she, said she was told it was an error. She didn't have to pay it, says the AP. The bill was turned over to a collection agency and eventually state troopers showed up, SWAT teamed her home and took her into jail in handcuffs. So so we all know how the media works unless uh, for the sheeple, for the hoopleheads uh, that don't know what's going on. They got their heads up their rear and they're going to bury their heads in the sand uh, when uh, crap hits the fan. They don't really believe something is real until the media tells them and the experts. So UK succumb succumbs to first double-dip recession since 1970s. Then we have, for the first time since depression, more Mexicans leave U.S. than uh, ever. So, are entering. So, uh, and it says that they're leaving. They're probably more like re uh, fleeing. And of course, you know, referencing to South Park, they had an episode all about that. Uh, next up, we have National Guard pulls 900 troops from Mexico border. So the Mexicans are leaving out of uh, United States. Uh, the National Guard is pulling troops from the border from Mexico. So I'm wondering if that's for civil rest, civil unrest. We know that the government is stocking up on um, uh, different types of ammunition. Uh, what is it, 600 million? They're uh, stocking up on hollow point weapons. They're getting ready to go to war, possibly with the American people. So who knows if they're pulling those troops for that? Uh, but we have Mexico seizes massive cache of ammo coming from the United States. And a lot of these weapons were what? AK-47s and wannabe M-16s, the AR-15s. So something that's interesting, guys, is that uh, there's another story. And it was coming from Expansions.com. And it was saying what? It was saying that a lot of this stuff that's coming through is actually Russian. And they had Chinese and Arabic writing on it. There was, this is a separate incident that U.S. border agents along with Mexican authorities, uh, uh, found caches of weapons uh, that were buried um, along the Arizona-Mexican border. Mainstream media is not covering it like a lot of other things that are going on. They're too busy starting race wars with, um, with uh, Trayvon. I just heard another case of that today where um, some white dude in Alabama got the crap beat out of him because he was trying to get some uh, uh, kids out of the street. So, and, but this is what's going on. They're finding caches of weapons. I mean, a lot of stuff here. I mean, you see this thing, uh, this picture, look at that, dude. And you just keep going. I mean, uh, there's SUVs full of stuff. I mean, this is no, no joke here. And just imagine, I mean, if the Chinese are at least coming to collect their debt, if not that, then they're coming for what? They said the Federal Reserve System owes us our gold. We want payment. I mean, so they have two reasons to come over here. So it could be that. It could be, you know, somewhat legitimate that uh, these countries or families or cartels in China and Russia still operate independently and they don't like the Western Illuminati, the Rothschild-type faction. Uh, or it could be that this is a transitioning period to get all those old nationalists in America, patriots, these militias that they know that they're getting ready to fight. That's why they're getting ready for it, like I said, with DHS buying all those rounds. Uh, this could be part of this to, you know, get rid of those borders, open it up and clear it out. And just all of a sudden you're going to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Chinese and you're just going to have all these different factions and you're, you're not going to see United States of America as, as you knew it. In other words, it's one of the final stepping stones to building this world government. So, yeah, I didn't really give much uh, thought to this whole, you know, Chinese, Russian troops in the border. I've heard this many, many times before. But uh, when you look at this article from April 10th, 2012, Chinese troops reportedly amassing near the U.S.-Mexican border uh, with this most recent news, it's kind of worth reporting now. So China wants to construct a 50-square-mile self-sustaining city south of Boise, Idaho. We knew about this. This is from February. Then remember this Vietnam man or Vietnamese man buys an entire U.S. town. Of course, it's population of one, but still. Obama quietly is seeking to cede U.S. oceans to United Nations law, shock recommendations buried in the White House report. So an ambitious uh, plan, stepped up government regulation of the oceans, includes an unreported effort to cede U.S. oceans to United Nations-based international law. Along with Leon Panetta, ocean zoning scheme was partnered with a globalist group that also aimed to hand over U.S. oceans and sovereignty to U.N. governance. Thank you.
Hopefully this goes through.